Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops Cold War In Depth. In today's very first weapon review episode, we're going to be taking a look at the ever so popular MP5 submachine gun. And I wanted to let you know in the beginning of this video, since all of the weapon stats are now public and in game, I no longer have to hyper focus on numbers and getting that data out there. We're going to run through all the numbers, but then we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about weapon kitting and how the MP5 should be used. The MP5 is probably the best submachine gun in the game, and it has very few weaknesses, or at least least very few meaningful weaknesses, which is why everybody and their grandmother is using it. It can also be kitted into almost any kind of weapon you want. It can be stealthy, it can be a hip fire machine, it can be almost analogous to an assault rifle if you don't mind taking all the suppressors off and going loud and proud, but it is an extremely versatile weapon. And for the rest of this video, please keep in mind that base health in Black Ops Cold War is 150 this year. It's exactly like it was in Black Ops 4, except you just don't see the numbers below the health bar. So when I start talking about damages and shots to kill, and the shots to kill are quite high, or the numbers are adding up to well over 100, that's because we have base health set at 150. MP5 could kill in as little as 5, or as many as 7 shots, depending on how far away your enemy is, and that's an actual damage number of 32 to 23, which is a little bit on the low lower end of things for submachine guns. Headshots are only going to matter at long ranges. They have a 1.4x multiplier along with every other weapon in this game. And again, up close, headshots won't matter. Long range headshots will definitely save you a shot or sometimes two to kill. Rate of fire is 857 rounds per minute, which is very fast for a submachine gun in Black Ops Cold War, and it's one of the reasons that this weapon is so good and so popular. The MP5 theoretical time to kill is about 280 milliseconds, notwithstanding any bullet travel time or velocity or anything like that which is very fast overall in the game. It's kind of average for submachine guns in Black Ops Cold War. All of the submachine guns kill pretty quickly, but if you want to look at the global average of all like LMGs and assault rifles and stuff, 280 milliseconds is a very fast time to kill. And interestingly, it's a long range time to kill is better than most SMGs. It's not like crazy better or insanely better, but if you're trying to hit people at long ranges, you will kill them a little bit faster with the MP5 than any of the other SMGs. It has a maximum damage range of about 15 meters, which is the second longest of all the submachine guns. The actual longest is the Bullfrog. And you know what? The Milano and KSB aren't doing too bad with the AK-74U having a surprisingly short range. But just keep in mind that the MP5 has the second longest range of all all SMGs, and you can see that it's got a lot of good things going on here. The MP5 handling stats is 275 milliseconds for ADS and 233 milliseconds for sprint out time. Of note, that sprint out time is going to be different than you than the one you actually see in game. This is the hand measured sprint out time. Both of these are very average for submachine guns, and the entire SMG class is roughly within one or two frames of each other in all of these aspects. So there's nothing super special going on there. And the MP5 also has close to the global average reload and hipfire stats. When it comes to the main two weapon classes, which is SMGs and assault rifles, they are all very similar in terms of reload and hipfire stats in terms of like mills and milliradians and all that. So there's nothing really exceptional going on with MP5 in that category as well. One of the things it does have going for it is that the base recoil is low and easy to control, and the weapon can be kitted into a laser just kind of like everything else in the game. There are so many recoil reducing attachments in this game that it is very easy to turn the MP5 into an actual laser with just a few attachments, but even if you're not using those, it's not going to be difficult to control and beam people at long ranges. Call of Duty MP5 weapons pretty much always have great iron sights, and this one is no exception. It's one of my favorite things about this submachine gun in particular and the AK-74U is that I find the iron sights to be excellent so I'm not really needing any sort of mill dot or reflex or anything like that and I don't really need to use all 10 perks I can kit it a little bit more efficiently and just rely on the iron sights and I think that the MP5's main strength is that it's a very forgiving weapon to use it's so forgiving because the time to kill is very fast relative to its fast firing rate which means you have minimal punishment for missing shots typically in not just Call of Duty but any kind of shooter game what you'll see is that a weapon that shoots really slow but has big powerful bullets will kill people very quickly and the balancing lever there is that if you miss your shots there's a lot of follow-up time before the next bullet can hit whereas the really fast weapons are very forgiving because you can just kind of scan over and then back over the enemy and if you miss a few shots it doesn't matter because they're always constantly coming out of your gun Weapons like that would typically have a slower time to kill, 
but relative to the fast firing rate, the MP5 is actually pretty quick. So you've got a pretty fast time to kill and a very forgiving fire rate. So if you miss a few shots here and there, it's really not going to impact your time to kill very much. It has great range, low recoil, and after we're done kitting it, it'll have overall great ballistics. So the MP5 is an easy to use, forgiving, and very versatile weapon in Black Ops Cold War. It may not be the technically best weapon, but it's gonna be the best weapon in most players' hands. And don't forget, it has great long range accuracy and time to kill and easy to use iron sights. So there's some more benefits on top as well. The MP5 has two main weaknesses that are very important to note. Number one is that it has very slow bullet velocity. All of the submachine guns with the exception of the AK-74U have very slow base bullet velocity. If you haven't watched the bullet velocity episode that I did or Exclusive Ace did, I would strongly recommend you do so because your bullet speed is probably the most important thing in the game. And compared to the other submachine guns, the MP5 has fairly low damage per shot. It is just not a very high damage weapon in any capacity. And it may be forgiving for follow-up shots, but sometimes it's gonna feel a little bit weird and a little bit more like a hit marker machine at longer ranges. Well, that's all for the stats part of today's episode, which as promised is shorter than normal since all of the stats are available in game. What I wanted to do at the end of this episode is talk about my two favorite MP5 classes. And we're gonna start off with my most favorite first, which is the stealth MP5 class that I built. I run perk greed on this one so that I can hoard all of the stealth perks and all of the tack mask and engineer and all that kind of stuff I need. Molotovs have been great. And let's take a look at the attachments on the weapon. We have no optical attachment. The first attachment I put on is the sound suppressor, which gives me muzzle flash concealment and a little bit less effective range. Now I'm aware the agency suppressor has a recoil reduction as well, but it has a bigger range penalty, which I don't want on this particular particular class. I always use the 9.5 inch Ranger barrel on the MP5. It gives me 100% extra bullet velocity with some less aim walking speed. Aim walking speed is not the most important thing to me, but that bullet velocity is an actual godsend. If you don't listen to anything else for this entire episode, please just keep in mind that that 9.5 inch Ranger barrel is one of the most important attachments that you can put on your MP5 because it kind of gets rid of the bad hit detection. It, it almost makes it into a perfect pure hit scan weapon like we want it to be. I also run the mounted flashlight, just the basic one with the plus 20% reveal distance because at least for now, as we talked about in a previous in-depth episode, it doesn't seem to matter what kind of flashlight you put on. It seems to have nearly infinite reveal distance and this one has no downsides. So I think that's a good one, good way to go. I can see people through the bushes and at long ranges, which is very helpful. I use the field agent grip, which gives me a little bit of vertical recoil control, but a lot of horizontal recoil control. Now, horizontal recoil control on the MP5 is the number one thing that you want. And I can just pull down on the stick or the mouse if, I'm, if I have vertical recoil control, but horizontal is very difficult to compensate for. And I think that this is the perfect attachment to reduce overall MP5 recoil. Then finally, at the end, I like running the 40 round speed mags because all of the 50 round ones and the ones below this one are unfortunately bugged and they don't give the right amount of ammo. But this one gives me a healthy boost to the ammo count, reload time, ammo in the magazine, pretty much everything, but with a pretty significant ADS penalty. I usually like snappy SMGs, but I kind of had to take an L on that one. And this class is basically my best recreation of the classic MP5 suppressed class. Almost every Call of Duty game that has an MP5 that's worth using has a really good way to use it with a suppressor as an aggressive, rushing, stealthy kind of weapon. You see that in Modern Warfare Warzone. You see MP5 equivalents in Advanced Warfare in Black Ops 3 and 4. And this is that class. Your goal is to stay off the radar, take advantage of Ninja and Ghost, move around really fast, spray people. Your downsides are that you're a little bit less snappy than you would want to be for a rushing class because you don't have that really fast ADS time. You can't really strafe walk and shoot walk super fast. And you're slightly less than base range, but you've got great bullet vol ballistics, great suppression and low recoil, which make all of that easy to compensate for. Next up is my gunfighter MP5 class. If you just love attachments, this one is the way to go. For the perks that I couldn't part with, I went for tactical mask, assassin, and of course, ninja, the same kind of secondaries and molotovs and stems and stuff. But the MP5 is what we're here to talk about today. This one, I went with the any kind of optics you want, just whatever floats your boat. Red dot's probably gonna be the way to go. But the first attachment is the agency suppressor. This one keeps me off the radar, gives me a little bit of vertical recoil control, and I take a pretty huge hit in effective damage range. But don't you worry, we're gonna make up for that because we're turning this weapon into a laser beam. Once again, I run the 9.5 inch Ranger barrel, which gives me way better bullet velocity and hit detection. There are other barrels that will fix my range problem, 
but they don't really help as much in terms of bullet velocity and hit detection, so I'm just a Ranger Barrel Addict. We do not run the flashlight on this one. We are going to be a little bit more dependent on our hip fire when we get close to people. So I'm going to be running the SWAT 5mm laser so that when I do get close to people, I can hip fire them really hard. And I do take a slight ADS time penalty for that, but we're going to fix it with a later attachment. Still running the field agent grip. I feel that is just kind of the perfect one for this weapon. There's not a lot in the way of downsides to it. The next attachment is again the 40 round speed mag. I would actually like to put the drum mag or the 50 round drum mag on this one, but they're currently bugged. In the future when they work properly, that's going to be the way to go. And one of the most important attachments is the very last handle that you get down here, the airborne elastic wrap. That gives you plus 30% ADS time, which gets rid of some of the other penalties. 90% flinch resistance, so you just about don't flinch. You can aim while going prone, so it's like your drop shot handle. And the only downside is that you have somewhat lesser shooting moving speed and a little bit slower sprint out time, which isn't great. But we're gonna fix that with our final attachment today, which is no stock that repairs the sprint out time and gives me a minor hip fire accuracy penalty. But with the other laser, I'm still on top of things with hip fire. So this weapon once fully kitted is almost a pure bonus class. The only thing I'm really losing is range. I lose a little bit of range and then gain a whole lot of everything else. Suppression, the ability to drop shot, better hip fire, slightly better ADS, massive recoil reduction, and it is a very good run and gun class if you want to do that. Guys, that is all for this episode of In Depth. I hope that you learned something useful. I hope that you enjoyed this new format. I'm experimenting with a lot of things, so I want to hear your feedback on it. And I'm also adding a side series where I show gameplay of each of these classes in a match and how they're supposed to be used. That'll probably be live in a few days. But tell me what you liked and didn't like about this episode and the editing and how I'm presenting stats and everything. And I will take all the feedback and consideration before the AK-74U episode. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.